Hello, my name is Dino O'Brien. I'm chair of the Norton Permanent Building Committee, and I would like to welcome you to a virtual tour of the municipal projects, Norton for Everyone, which will be Article 1 at the Special Town Meeting on May 8th. We're going to be visiting the Town Hall, the Senior Center, and the Athletic Complex at our local schools. As we enter the Town Hall, let's turn to the right to begin with. And the first thing I'd like to point out to you is the uh, ramp in the floor leading from the entryway into the side of the building that is the old gymnasium. You can see by the crack illustrated here that there is quite the ramp angle between these two buildings. As we enter the town clerk's office, immediately to the right, you'll notice the customer service area. It's quite tight. Um, the counter is not at handicapped level, and there is very little privacy. As you can see, it's quite open to the rest of the town clerk's office. Please note the, um, the overcrowded conditions. Uh, files that are important to the town. The working relationship between the staff members is quite tight. You'll also notice that there are a lot of wires running around. Uh, the rabbit warren of power strips and electrical outlets ganged together to provide electrical access where there is none. Space heaters are used because of the airflow conditions in the building. The floors, the wires crisscross the floors, which is a tripping hazard. Leaving the town clerk's office, we take an immediate right into the uh, town treasurer's accountant's office that we're all probably very familiar with the service counter. Inside the office, you can see structural cracks in the walls that are as are illustrated here. If you look up at the ceiling, you will see where the rain comes in. The roof has been patched many times, but it's still a huge problem during our, our storms. Several desks have had to be moved out of the way, and there is a permanent bucket that collects rainwater. This is the town of Norton IT room. You can see the server in the back walls, um, all the boxes, all the racks, all the wires. This is where the town's website is managed. Any electronic information that comes in from the town, the hub for all of our data and records is housed in this room. As you can see, it's not air conditioned, it's not large, um, it does not accommodate the town's IT needs. Our next stop is the town accountant's office uh, where you can see structural uh, problems. There are cracks within the walls. Um, one of the, some of the cracks located under the window on your right do allow weather to enter the room um, during snow, storm, and rain. You can also see at that location the first of our mold problems within the town hall. We staff has tried to remediate it by painting over it and washing it with bleach, but it still comes back. We will move then to the assistant to the town manager's office. As you can see, it's quite a small office with only one point of egress. The fire exit from this room is the window that you see on the left, which is plexiglass and can be pushed out, which leads directly into the town accountant's office for means of egress. This office also has problems with its electrical wiring, with the use of power strips uh, that are ganged together to provide electricity to this room. We are now in the town manager's office and I'd like to point out uh, the handicapped accessible lift going to the former selectman's meeting room. This um, lift is no longer in use. The state decided that we could no longer use it and that it was a danger to the public. So there is no handicapped accessibility to the selectmen's meeting room through these narrow stairs that you see. We're now on the second floor of the town hall, which houses assessors, conservation, parks and recreation, and our planning department, as well as inspectional, inspectional services and our health department. Immediately on your left, if you look at the ceiling, you'll notice the continuing mold problem. This is also visible from the select board's room on the first floor and you notice its proximity to the air ducts, so it is a real concern about the air quality within the building. 
You'll see also right in front of you a large table which is the meeting space available to departments on this second floor. It is surrounded by the individual departments. The planning department is directly ahead of the head of the table. This is where people interested in doing business with the town of Norton for long-range planning, economic development, come and meet with our planning director. Again, you will see a Robert Warren of power strips gang together to provide electricity. You can also see our planning director's office if somebody wants to have a private conversation concerning the economic development of our community. This is where they must go to meet with our planning director. We're now in our conservation department. As you can see, it is quite crowded, and please notice the width of the doorway. That is a concern in case there was ever an emergency within the department. Going in through to the conservation agent's individual workspace, you can see it is again crowded. Please notice the open ductwork in the ceiling uh, that has been wrapped and taped and tried be fixed but can no longer be fixed and the hanging light fixtures. We're moving now towards our Board of Health. On the way there I'd like to point out the refrigerator unit that is in the hallway. This is where the town houses uh, vaccines and other items used by our nurse in the health department. As you enter the health department you'll see that it is again another rabbit warren of small offices hindered by ganging together of electrical equipment. There is nowhere in this office for our nurse to have a private conversation with individuals who come in seeking assistance. If she is going to give an inoculation, it's usually done in the hallway um, at the front of the building. And just a quick stop in our inspections department, I wanted to illustrate the fact that we are no longer replacing ceiling tiles in the ceilings when the rain comes through and the tiles get ruined and the ductwork gets impacted, uh, it has just become too much of an ongoing cost to replace individual ceiling tiles. Now we're going back down to the first floor, and before we exit the building, I'd like to point out the handicapped restroom for the women in the building. There is no electronic uh, access to help you with opening the door when you go in, and it's quite a little angle there to deal with. So now we're exiting the town hall, and I'd like to thank you for uh, bearing with us as we took this quick tour. We're now going to be moving towards the Council on Aging, which is the second stop on our virtual visit with Town of Norton Municipal Buildings. Our second stop is the Norton Senior Community Center. This building was built in 1888 and has housed a one-room school department, a fire department, and is now in its third life as the Norton Senior Community Center. You can see the building has structural problems on the outside as we're moving towards the entrance, which is at the rear of the building. It is a handicapped ramp, and you will notice that it's quite the sharp angle to enter the building at the right, especially if you were in a wheelchair. As so many of us are aware, the Norton Senior Community Center not only provides programming and continuing education for the elders in our community, ages 60 through 100, it's also the place where folks in our community who are in need of assistance for fuel assistance, housing assistance, food assistance, come and meet with our outreach worker. What this slide is demonstrating is the inability of someone who might be in a wheelchair to come in and have a private conversation with our outreach worker. As you'll notice, you can't close the door, so there is no privacy at these moments when people do need assistance within our community. We're now going into the main programming space for the Senior Community Center. The receptionist area is there. If you turn around, you are in the public meeting space, programming space. This is where all activities are held. Right now it's set up for the tax preparers. We have offers of physical education here, nutritional programming, socialization, educa continuing education programs, they all take place in this room. On the left hand side you can also see that it doubles as the housing for the freezer used by the Council on Aging in preparing meals and providing soup and other nutritional information to the community. 
We're now looking at the kitchen area. As you can see, it is very overcrowded since there is no storage to support nutritional activities at the center. We are unable to provide congregate meals for individuals within our community who would like to come together and share a meal. And we do not have access to Meals on Wheels distribution through this small overcrowded kitchen area. Continuing with overcrowding and storage issues, we have access to the restrooms here. You can see chairs and other items since there is little or no room available for other storage locations. We've now moved to the administrative side of the building. You can see this is an individual office space. It is again overcrowded due to lack of storage. You'll notice also in this building as in the town hall there is the ganging together of power strips to provide electrical outlets. There is overcrowding within the office space so that uh, someone with a wheelchair access ha would have real problems getting in for a private conversation with the director. Moving farther down the hallway into the storage room here. Please note that during non-COVID times this room is also used for programming of smaller items such as the knitting club, uh, men's book club, continuing education items, but it does serve as the main storage area for the council with all of its activities and you can see that there is very little space to do anything in this room. So this concludes our tour of the Senior Community Center and we're now going to move on towards the Athletic Complex. Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Sumner. I'm the Athletic Director at Norton High School and today we're going to take you through um, three specific areas of our athletic fields which will start at the high school and the track. Uh, the fields behind the yell that are primarily used for practices and sub-varsity games and also the tennis courts at the middle school. First, we'll get started with the high school fields. As many of you have known, the high school field tends to flood if we get a lot of rain. It currently looks okay, but um, that is because we haven't really used it in the last year and a half. We've used it uh, minimally just for soccer, only a handful of football games, and we played in the spring rather than the fall. Uh, the track itself is in need of, of dire repair. It definitely has to be resurfaced within the next couple of years. It needs to be painted. The long jump area needs to be completely redone, as you can see in some of the pictures we have here. That has to be completely torn up and replaced. And the track really should be replaced as well. You'll also notice on the high school field, we still have what I would call antiquated lighting there. The new standard is to have LED lighting on the field. It's very hard for us to even replace the bulbs. As slowly the bulbs stop working, we end up with a little bit less light. And the same could be said for the scoreboard as well, which is very dated, probably about 30 years old. It's at the end of its life as well. All of these projects combined, if we had to do them on our own, would all be quite expensive. So getting a new track uh, with a turf field that would alleviate a lot of our field use issues as well. And new lighting involved at the school would really be a great asset to all of the high school programs. Now we take a look at some of our sub-varsity fields and practice fields that we use uh, for our high school athletics and even some middle school athletics and practices. Um, and youth sports as well use these fields. These fields are located primarily behind the L school. So first I'd like to talk about the pit field, which gets used by lacrosse for practices, soccer for JV games and practices, also gets used by youth football quite a bit. Um, the field is, it holds too much water. It's very wet. The edges in the corners are always muddy. If you're using it early in the morning, you'll know that it's just always a wet field. It's actually in a, in a good spot in terms of how much use it gets. The fact that it even looks halfway decent is, is amazing. If we were able to get a turf field, what would happen is we'd be able to really back off using this pit field. And this would primarily be our grass practice field that would get a lot of rest. And we could actually do some work on that field as well to try to bring it up to par. Then we would move on to the, the field behind the L school and adjacent to the pit field. This field is used very rarely uh, just because it's in such bad condition and it, it's really hard to use. Occasionally baseball will use it to hit fly balls to kids and youth football will use it occasionally but it's a very rough hard surface area. It's actually where we would propose to put new tennis courts if those were approved. Then we would move on to the JV baseball field which again needs a lot of work. The outfield of that field used to be the football practice field but it just gets too wet and it's too muddy and uh, we felt it was you know unsafe to be right over there in that outfield so we've actually moved the practice football field over to kind of the outfield of the JV softball field as you can see the outfield of the JV softball field is there's no grass growing on it football has used it for been using it for practice 
it's not a great location, but it, it's one that it's the only one we can use that's actually worthwhile to use at all. But again, it's very subpar. Uh, the drainage from the parking lot drains right into the field. So when it rains, it doesn't dry. And then they can only use about half of the field. I mean, if you just drive up to the field, you're going to see are in really, really tough shape. And a lot of times when people talk about turf, they're only thinking about the varsity games that they go to, but we really need to think about where our kids, where our student athletes are practicing and where our younger athletes in town, where are they using these fields for practice? And these are just really subpar fields that have to be, something has to be done to them in the near, very near future. Lastly, we'll take a look at our tennis courts at the middle school. Um, as you'll see from the pictures, there's really not too much to talk about here. These tennis courts are probably on their last season, I would say this year. I don't know how much repairs we could do to them to get these up to par. You're really looking at some major, major cracks. The posts are leaning. Every year we have to do a little bit more crack filling and it's just getting worse and worse. You're really looking out of these five courts. I mean, two of them are probably borderline playable. The other ones, you can use them, but they need to be resurfaced. They need to be, all the cracks need to be filled. They need to be repainted and relined. There's just a lot of work that needs to go into these. And really, I think if a, when a company comes out to see these, they would say, we need to repair, replace all the tennis courts that are there, all five of them. They would say they need to be replaced. Also, the, one of the biggest issues with the field is that it's, it was, I mean, the courts is that it was built on top of a leaching field, which is part of our unstable um, subsurface for the tennis courts. So they truly do need to be replaced very soon. And again, I would say this is probably the last year we'll be able to use these tennis courts. So I'd like to thank you for joining me on this virtual tour of the Norton for Everyone project. I hope you now have a better understanding of the conditions of our municipal buildings and athletic fields. I look forward to seeing everyone at the town meeting on May 8th, beginning at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. If you have any additional comments or concerns, or just want to chat about this, please feel to reach out to me. You can call me on my cell, which is 774-265-0365, or you can reach me through my email, dobrien025 at gmail.com. Thank you very much.